Hello together, welcome to my channel. Here's Arkady. And today is my next session to talk about laser cladding. Today I would like to address the topic of high power laser cladding. I would like to show you what possibilities you have, what is the difference by working with rectangular spot or circular spot, what is nowadays high power and how it can be applied in industry. This is also my last video in 2021. So I would like to use opportunity to wish you all a Merry Christmas, a wonderful holidays time, Happy New Year. And next time we're going to meet already in January, where I will also have my first interview published. Why high power laser cladding? In industry, we are mostly driven by costs and costs can be related to the productivity. So having conventional laser cladding, sometimes, especially for massive big components, were too expensive. There is always a market need and requirement to work with a bigger spot, with a higher surface covering rate, with a more volume of material which we can put to the surface. And for that approaches, a high power laser cladding has found more and more application need in the industry. There are a couple of companies on the market who use already 20 kilowatt lasers for industrial applications. For example, hydraulic rods or steel industry where we look on the rollers or valves of a high dimensions. And, and another novel application where high powers are getting more attention is related to brake discs. Let's take a look on those examples in details and get our own opinion. What is the future of high power laser cladding? <laughs> if you remember in one of my last videos, I have shown you an example of um, trends in laser cladding and development directions. So today we're going to focus on the high power area and where you can meet high power. For one side is it's itself a direction where we look on circular and rectangular spot developments. From another side, it's also a high speed process where high power lasers nowadays are already found industrial applications. There is an overview table which in my opinion um, is slightly older, but I want to focus your attention only on two right columns. So we talk about high power circular spot and high power rectangular spot. The main difference between them is if you look exactly on a spot geometry, then it can be related to overlap behavior. If you look on a circular spot to cover the surface, you usually need more than 50% of overlap. In opposite, if you work with a rectangular spot, there is only requirement starting from 15% of overlap. So it means your coverage of the surface with a rectangular spot is much higher compared to a circular spot. To be able to get a welding seam or a stable welding bath to compensate a rectangular spot of high width and this narrow overlap, you will probably need to sacrifice your deposition velocity. So at the end of the day, and we're going to see it, there is a more or less an equal behavior if you work with a circular spot, but with a higher speed, or you work with a rectangular spot. At the end of the day, what might be deciding for you is a material you use, is a surface you need to cover in terms of dimensions, weight, because sometimes also a hidden put might be critical for your distortion. The couple of tools primarily developed from Fraunhofer EWS and now industrially um, established with the nozzles, which, which can help you to work with high power devices. And you can see a couple of examples that's shown on this slide. What are the main highlights of circular sports? You have a very high process productivity for rotation symmetrical bodies especially. You can also apply so-called hybrid deposition where you can inductively preheat the parts and even further increase your feed rate or material consumption rate. The power deposition rates go in direction to 18 kilograms per hour, which is a massive competition, not only for PTA, but also for thermal spring. And with a spot size of 12 millimeters, you still can get a very stable process with an attractive surface roughness. If we're going to look on a high power area with rectangular spot, then usually nowadays we still talk about 
20 kilowatt range of powders apply in industry. However, the technology nowadays can work in, let's say, close to industrial conditions with laser beams up to 50 kilowatts. I don't know if somebody needs this in industry, if it really makes sense because 50 kilowatt lasers are still expensive, but the reality is that you can work with a spot weave up to 40 millimeters and get a surface coatings with up to five millimeters per deposition pass. Another approach is if you combine high power with high speed, you can end up with something which is extremely fast and can cover your surface with extremely high deposition efficiency. I have almost forgotten to mention that in both cases, if you work with high power or high, uh, high speed, high power, in any way, due to the big melting bath, your deposition efficiency is exceeding 90%, at least for rotation symmetrical bodies. Here is an example of high power circular spot tube deposition with, um, let's say, following data, velocity of 1.5 meter a minute, step around 50% and feed rate of 91 gram per minute. Your deposition rate already with eight kilowatt laser is around six kilograms per hour. And this is a fine, let's say, this was a tube of 60 millimeter diameter only with a wall thickness of five millimeters and one millimeter um, length, just to get a feeling what is possible with this technology. Same tube produced with a high power rectangular spot. The values are here slightly different. We needed 10 kilowatts. Um, and at the end of the day, you can directly see that the deposition time required for that surface, especially if you the step and feed rate, are higher, but the velocity, of course, is different. If we summarize it together, you can see that in both cases, you are capable to get a very smooth surface. You, in both cases, you have high deposition efficiency over 90%, and the coating time for this application is below 20 minutes. In both cases, the target was to achieve one millimeter coating thickness. So you can imagine that using conventional laser cladding with say five millimeter spot and the typical velocities of one meter per minute, you would need around 40 to 45 minutes to finish the same job. So there's a clearly clear trend which tells us high power has application potential for many different industrial needs. This is a short overview of high power. I hope it was interesting for you to understand where the high power market is developing. And there's a couple of laser suppliers who already produce and sell in high volumes those high power kilowatt lasers. The laser quality is enough good. And in my opinion, there are a couple of things which you have still to improve and they are related to nozzle, to laser safety, especially if you have a back reflection at 20 kilowatts, and the stability of the whole process working in a long-term industrial condition, especially operating in two or three shifts daily. The answer on this question, probably a couple of companies can already give who work with high power lasers. They definitely had to improve many things in terms of stability of process, but I believe there is a big future for high power applications. I really think that there will be not only a niche, but really a direction where high power lasers will be more and more applied in industry. And there are more and more uh, people convinced that the high power applications can replace other technologies from the market, especially looking on PTA, standard hard facings, and even to certain extent, thermal spray coatings. We still keep the low dilution, we still keep very nice metallurgical bonding, narrow heat affected zone, and we're able to get very nice and smooth surface, where the only, let's say, where the only not really demanding post-treatment or post-machining required to achieve a final product. At the end of the day, it's up to you to decide if high power laser plating is your technology or not. I believe there is a future and wish everyone a wonderful time. See you next year. Bye.